analysis, and a lot of times it, it just doesn't work because of the value of the structure itself being relatively low. And we need to talk about that a little bit. Like if we probably won't make that judgment in every case, but when it's really obvious, we'll probably not recommend elevation just because it's obvious it's not going to pass. So on the client, I would be to do the audit. Um, I am actually going to have to pay the engineer to do the elevation certificate. No, if you. What was the question? Was I'm a client, and I decide to do the audit. about the elevation certificate. So for homeowners that don't have one already, they'll be getting an elevation certificate as part of this pro project, which is a really nice added value. They're, they cost around $1,000 a piece and they'll be getting one for free. We need to probably build a caution into the counseling to not just, don't just take that elevation certificate and hand it to your insurance agent and say, yes. re-rate me based on this. <laughs> because some, sometimes you're rated a certain way based on limited information. You, you can, if you have an intelligent conversation with your insurance agent, say, can you provide me a quote based on this? Or there's other ways to see if it will help you or hurt you. But we've had cases with other programs where people say, great, I got this nice free thing for a thousand bucks. And they give it to their insurance agent and their insurance actually goes up. So we have to be careful how we advise people to use that. Yeah, so, so if it goes up because it turns out their home is elevated lower than that the subsidized rate is cheaper for them than the full risk rate, that's not a problem because the homeowner has a choice between the cheaper of those two. It's a problem which came up in one of the, the city studies recently. Um, they did an elevation certificate. The homeowner gave it to his uh, flood insurance broker. His insurance went up. Unbeknownst to him, there had been an earlier probably wrong elevation certificate that was being used to rate his house, that elevation certificate put his house at plus three, three feet above BFV. The new elevation certificate put him at zero. So it suddenly dropped him, right? He had no idea that that prior um, thing existed. So to the extent that somebody can, can speak to an intelligent flood insurance bro broker, and I underscore, you know, knowledgeable, right? A lot of them just don't know what they're selling. <laughs> but a knowledgeable flood insurance broker can say, well, look at this, you're rated at plus feet three, according to this elevation certificate, you're at zero. Whether an insurance agent is going to say that or not, a counselor can say that. So, yeah. So, sorry, because I know this, this question is going to come to the counselor. So, if I've been paying my insurance for 15 years based on an incorrect assessment, is my insurance company going to give me a rebate? Am I going to get some kind of... <laughs> the question is going to come. So, the question is going to come. If they have been too much, I think they'll go back one, one year, not for the 15 years. <laughs> no, you're right. It's going to, I mean, I, I don't know how many times I've been asked that, right? So, yeah, but if, if Scott said they'll go back a year, they won't go back before that. But, you know, if you find out now, and you're in the last 11, you know, month 10 of your policy, you can get a rebate for the first 10 months of your home. Okay. Should we take a break now? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's, can we try and make it short because we've got a lot of flood insurance coverage to cover. So how about quarter to 12? Come back at quarter to 12.